Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to new standards of excellence. Yes. Say yes to engage in reportage with a difference. Yes. Introducing Yes International Magazine. The time to say yes to your dreams and aspirations is here. to another edition of our Instagram live uh, session. My name, like I always say, has not changed. My name remains Azu Arinze. And my guest tonight is Apostle Anselm Madubuko. All right, our guest just waved. Well, Apostle Anselm Madubuku is one of God's most dependable and reliable generals. As a matter of fact, he is the founder and general uh, overseer of uh, Revival Assembly Church. Apostle Madubuku trained as an architect at the University of Nigeria in Nugu campus before yielding to the call of the Almighty God. A father of three and a native of Ihiala in Anambra State. Tonight, we shall be looking at uh, one of his laudable works, and that's talking about Azusa. You know, the 19th edition is going to commence in the next few days, as well as uh, other issues. Now, I would like to implore all of us to follow us on our YouTube uh, channel. Our YouTube channel is the yesng.com, T-H-E-Y-E-S-N-G.com. Now, without meaning to blow our trumpet, we conduct uh, some of the best, 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 best interviews, and the uh, trial will convince you. Once again, you're welcome to tonight's uh, Instagram Live uh, session. Now, Apostle, the 19th uh, edition of your annual uh, Azusa conference will hold between the 19th and the 25th of uh, July, 2021. Could you tell us a little about uh, Azusa? Thank you. I just want to say thank you to you, Azu, because um, you've always been there from the beginning, you know. Thank you, sir. I'm trying to push publicity, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful. And may God really Thank bless you. you. Amen. Bless you, very good. Amen. You know, uh, the gospel, uh, the gospel must be preached. No matter what happens, no matter how we feel, no matter how the economy of the sort of economy, we're here for that purpose. Mm. And uh, the, the state of the church now is very, very terrible. You know, mm. uh, the true preachers are suffering. The charlatans are flying. <laughs> yes. And uh, people people see the charlatans as the real preachers, unfortunately, you know. Because the devil hates the true preachers and he fights them, he keeps them quiet, he he makes sure they don't have money, they don't have nothing, you know. So that people will not hear the truth about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Whereas the fake ones are loud and everywhere and a lot of money. So people are looking at those ones as the ambassadors of the gospel, which has affected the gospel. Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, but we, we choose to remain focused. We choose to stay on the narrow path. You know, we choose the old path. We choose the ancient, ancient lines of our fathers. You know, mm -hmm. we, we choose to stay, the, keep the gospel the way it should be, the real, the word of God. 
And um, that is what made us to you know, begin this Altusa Revival Conference. It's not like any other conference. It's a revival conference. It's, a, it's an awakening conference. It is mm -hmm. something to refocus the direction of some people in the church. For us to take our eyes off prosperity and off our the things we are we're making so much noise about and put you and put you and put our focus back on Jesus. I know and then and then think about souls, think about heaven, think about hell. These things are real. Hmm. Every day people are dying and going to hell, but nobody seems to care and they don't even understand you know, they don't even know what to do. Some people think they are Christian because nobody is hearing the true gospel anymore. Mm. Nobody hears about repentance. Nobody hears about you know the 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 main the main matter about the Christianity has been trivialized, and we are now exalting the unimportant matters. You know, mm. be, being very sensational, which is not necessary. So. Sens sensationalism has now affected the gospel. If you want to now be popular, you have to just wake up and say something, you know. <laughs> say something that's not even the gospel. And then, you know, you, you, you trend. And that's, that's why people just want to trend, you know. So we, 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 need to, we need to cry to God to come and help us, you know, bring this church back. Because the time is short as well. Uh, Jesus is coming, and it's it's no more a cliche; it's a truth because the signs mm -hmm. the signs are everywhere. Uh, this world don't have many more years to go before Jesus returns. So our job is to wake up a sleeping church. We are not for parties. We are not for entertainment. We are not for disco. We are not for all those things we are seeing in the churches today. We are for the full gospel of Jesus Christ giving honor to the Holy Spirit who is the leader of this dispensation. You know, Jesus has finished his job. He has gone back to heaven. He has sent the Holy Spirit to us. But you know what? We don't even know who the Holy Spirit is. We don't even recognize him. We don't even remember him. But whereas it's supposed to be the head, the direction of the church. So there is a, a serious cry for the church to return to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Let us go back to how it was, how church was done, you know, 2,000 years ago. Let's go back to the beginning and, and give the Holy Spirit his, his church back so that he can run the church. The gospel now has become so uh, politicized that most people don't even preach the truth. They preach what people want to hear so that they can remain relevant and you know um, just you know stay in the system but we must understand that jesus christ is lord and he is the one we preach and we must continue to preach even if nobody is listening our <laughs> job is to <laughs> yeah like you know, because yeah, because most times people don't want to be here what you're saying because you're not saying what they want to hear. All people want to hear is your enemy will die. The person, <laughs> the person responsible for your stagnation must die tomorrow. They're going to fast for all those that hate you to die. You know, if, if, you're, if you're on that line, you'll be very busy. People will, people, <laughs> people will be calling you to help them solve all their problems, you know. And you tell the people, I can solve all your problems. So people are bringing mm -hmm. problems to you, which is not even the gospel. Problems are part of the part of life, and we are we are taught to endure. There are some things we cannot change. There are some mm -hmm. things we cannot pray out. We just have to wait out, you know. Mm -hmm. But people don't want to wait. People just want a quick fix. Enter trouble, I run out tomorrow, so I'll be fine, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But, <laughs> but that is that is the real gospel. But mm -hmm. when you keep when you keep saying that people will leave you alone because they don't like it because they hear that's a magic man. In that place, that <laughs> once you drink that water, you know everything will be fine. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Now, I'll, I'll still come back to some of the salient points that you have raised, but first, you know, I just need us to maintain a thread. Now, where exactly 
is this year Sasos are holding? Where is it taking place? It's taking place um, at the Revival Assembly, at the church premises, and also online. Okay. You know, we're, we're trying to establish a more uh, vi visible online presence for because of the COVID and because of, because now normally we used to have people from South Africa, from US, from Kenya, from Ghana, from Tanzania, all those countries, but now they cannot come. Mm. So they're going to be with us online. But there's, thank God, like, or like last year, we, we, we didn't have any live audience last year. It was 100% online last year. But this year will be both online and offline, whatever they call it. So I, I, uh, we, we are at the, at the Coco bus stop, you know. But yes, I was going stop. to say it would be nice to mention the address so that those who would like to come will also know where they're coming yeah. to. Yeah. What's the address uh, of the church? It's um, Revival Close. Okay. You know, off Coco Industries Road. Okay. You know, in that, uh, Yeah, uh, uh, industrial estate. That's where we are. All right, sir. Now, who are the, the, the guest speakers that are coming around for this year's uh, conference? Yeah, yeah. I have, um, because I believe that one man cannot be an island. I cannot, be, I cannot speak for seven days and do all the sessions. Because we're having a total of 21 sessions, mm -hmm. you know, about, about 22 sessions actually. So I have a, a Dr. David Obueli. You know, I'm sure I'm sure you, you know of him. Yes, I know him. He's, 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 uh, there was a time he came for one of our programs. I remember him. Yes. Very, very great, great anointed uh, man of God. So he'll be there and. Um, uh, three others, uh, Apostle Tony Lukoyede, is doing a great okay. work after, after the Redeemed Church. He has, his own, he has a camp, his own camp okay. after the Redeemed Church. They were, we're having another guy who has a special calling on the end time. Mm. You know, he understands, he, he will tell you the dates of certain things from the Bible. Mm. The things mm. that the Bible heed about the end times. He has a grace. His name is Bishop of Germany. He has a grace to amazing. Amazing. I mean, <laughs> this Bible, people don't even know the Bible at all, but he has a gift to unravel mysteries, pull out seasons, you know, from scriptures that have been there for thousands of years, you know. Amazing. Then another revivalist, uh, from Calabar, Theodore Effion. Theodore Effion will tell you history of revival from the book of the Acts to 2021. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah, you, know, you, know, you know, the Azusa Street revival was, was the, is, is the most um, recognized revival that ever happened here on earth okay. since, since Jesus left. You know, there may have been others, but not, not recorded or noted that, that, they would, that you see the fruit still remaining. It, it was an incredible... Azusa Street is a street somewhere in Los Angeles. You know, so uh, the address of that place was 312 Azusa Street. Hmm. So God, God came to Tabernacle, literally, over that mission. For three and a half years, three and a half years, people were seeing creative miracles, not mm. lies that are recorded. Americans record <laughs> facts, you know. <laughs> Blind people that had uh, no eyes, eyes will grow out. People that had no limbs, new limbs will grow out. I mean, the kind of thing that happened on Azusa Street Revival were undescribable. In fact, the, 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 the story goes that the, the grace was so much, the Shekinah glory of God was on, on that building. It could, it, at night, it was like, a, like fire that people ran to bring in the, the water, the, the, the fire, firefighters, you know, only to get there to say that there was not a physical fire. Although there was mm. burning, but it wasn't burning. That was the glory of God. You know, mm. Angels were going up and down. <clears throat> moving spare parts from heaven to earth. It was, it was amazing. It happened for three and, three and a half years. Every day, 
morning, wow. afternoon, night. And for the first time, there was no talk of race in 1906. It started in April 1906 to November 1909. Seven and a half years. It was led by a one-eyed black man. Can you imagine? Hmm. In, the time, in the time when the blacks were treated as animals, in fact, the blacks could not stay in the same room as whites. In fact, before the revival broke out, William Seymour was going to a Bible school, but they, they didn't let him sit in the hall. He was mm. take, taking his lectures from the corridor because he was black, you know. Mm. But when the revival, when God pinpointed him as the arrowhead of that revival, everything changed. The blacks and the whites now will jump themselves more. in this. Yes, <laughs> in a very, very tiny, run down, dilapidated, you know, place that they were using for uh, to store horses. You know, interesting. It came the place where people were coming from all over the world. Assemblies mm. of God churches, four square churches, most uh, Church of God in Christ, they all came out of Azusa Street Revival. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Now, what, what should those, you know, who are planning to attend the DCS Azusa conference expect? What should they be looking forward to? Yeah, it's, it's not a show. It's a pure gospel revival. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pure gospel revival. Like it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not to come and, ah, but come and do your thing. No, no, no. We are very serious people. You know, we are looking for God. We are not looking for man. You know, we, we, mm -hmm. we, we want the sound of God. We want the presence of God. You see, this country needs help. In fact, the whole world needs help. Mm -hmm. And it looks as if God is so far away because the church is not, we have missed it. You know, God, God, God loves the church, but he's not happy with the church. Mm. So he's like gone away from us and just watching us. And we want mm. to bring him back. We want to say, Lord, forgive us, you know, revive us, set us on fire again. When, when I got saved in the, in the 80s, early 80s, man, people were on fire. Mm. Oh, it was serious. But all that fire is gone. You know, mm. when I when I got saved, all my friends were saved. But I mean, they had to be saved because they couldn't resist the power of God that was we had at that time. You know, mm. so but now you're begging people, please come and know Jesus. I beg you, go. You know, it, so we want that revival again. You know, okay. Though, in those days there were there were no buses to bring people to church. You have to find a way to church. Now, church has to bring bus, has to bring money. As to you know, people Bring are like food. even food. Food. Uh, ex exactly. <laughs> so, uh, there's lunch, lunch will be served today. Oh, sweet, I'll be, sweet, I'll be served today. You know, all to drag people, which is not the way it should be. It's the mm. power of God that should draw people to, to God, not food, not clothes, mm. not money, not money. Are you giving them money? It, early, early church were not giving anybody money. In fact, they were the ones bringing money at the apostles' feet, according to the Bible. You know, mm. so uh, philanthropy is not what the gospel is all about, really. You know, so <laughs> but we are not made it to be the main thing. So no matter what you are doing, as long as you are feeding some people, you are covered, which is a shame. Mm. You know, interesting, interesting.